It's Christmas time again, and unfortunately, I don't have so much time to dig into it, so we just chatter a little bit about it. What I mean are the RDNA 3 driver patches, which AMD is currently sending in, revealing the first low level information. But first, as always, a disclaimer. I just skimmed over the patches, so I might have overlooked something. AMD's patch series may also include code lines, which will get updated slash changed over time. So not necessarily everything is going to be correct, and it's just a snapshot of what is currently presented. That said, after looking through the driver pieces, this table for the used IP versions was made. Let's quickly go through the entries. At the beginning is the graphics core version, which is now 11 for RDNA 3 GPUs. For discrete RDNA 1 products, it was 10.1, and discrete RDNA 2 GPUs have the version number 10.3. While the numbers which AMD is assigning are not too meaningful, RDNA 3 will be a major micro-architecture overhaul. From a tech enthusiastic perspective, this is really awesome to see. Because looking back at the launch of GCN1 in 2012, there wasn't a lot of progress after it, since AMD was in a financially very dire situation. That led to GCN2, 3, 4, and to some extent even GCN5 to be not really big jumps forward, but the competition changed a lot with each or every second generation. With the RDNA series, AMD is on a faster track with more progress over time. But anyway, the next entry is for the SOC infrastructure. As far as I understand it, it's a standard as to how AMD sets the registers and manages all IP blocks inside their chips. With GCN5 slash Vega, SOC 15 was introduced. It is still used in current RDNA 2 products and will be replaced by SOC 21 and RDNA 3. The numbers might be tied to the year when AMD finalized the standard. Further we have the system management unit, which handles power control and more. RDNA 1 and 2 got the version number 11, while RDNA 3 will most likely use 13.0. something. Rembrandt and CDNA 2 are already using an SMU with the major version 13. Then there's a new IMU block, which is also related to power management. Seemingly more around graphics power and the mass scheduling block. That micro engine scheduler was already introduced with RDNA 1 in 2019. It sounds like a central scheduler, which is handling 3D, compute, and SDMA queues. According to AMD's Bridgman, MESS is intended to replace the current compute hardware schedulers and to provide hardware scheduling for the graphics queues for the first time. AMD's patches add MESS support for RDNA 1, 2, and RDNA 3. The software team was apparently busy with other tasks and, slash or, needed a few years till they built the infrastructure around the new scheduling capabilities. RDNA 3 has the version number 11 for that block, while RDNA 1 and 2 include version 10.1. Another version jump enjoys the GPU graphics memory controller from 10 to 11. That's a separate IP block from the unified memory controllers, which interface with the external memory like GDDR or HBM. The rest also got a new major version number. However, most of the changes are not documented and sometimes AMD pumps up the major digit when only small changes were done and sometimes they only increase the minor version or even revision number when they did fairly large changes. So I wouldn't project too much into these numbers. There are so many fascinating questions around RDNA 3 from top to bottom. Let's start with the vector units and the cache hierarchy. RDNA 1 and 2 use WGPs with 4 SIM units, each having 32 lanes. There's a scratch pad memory called LDS storing up to 128KB and then there are two separate L0 caches, each holding 16KB of data. There are at least two things I would expect to change with RDNA 3. One of them are the operation modes of the WGP. In the WGP mode, the wavefronts from a workgroup are scheduled to all four SIMD units. That provides more LU resources and the whole LDS memory with better data sharing. The issue is that the WGP is not a monolithic structure and there are two separate L0 caches which are not coherent and need explicit handling to ensure correctness. An alternative is the compute unit mode where the WGP is split into logical units but the explicit management of the caches for workgroup synchronization is not needed. One idea is that AMD could unify the separate structures and get rid of the issue and potentially also of the compute unit mode. The second point are the cache capacities. 16 KB for the L0 cache can be considered to be tiny, whereas Intel and Nvidia use unified storage structures with a programmable split between cache and scratchpad memory function. On Intel's Alchemist, it's 192 KB large and appears to be configured to provide at least 64 KB for the level 1 cache. RDNA 3 is rumored to use 256 SIMD lanes, 
or shader cores per WGP, which will make a capacity increase necessary either way. It is still unclear to me if RDNA3 will use a similar unified structure as the competition or simply increase the current capacities, keeping separate structures for the LDS and L0 cache. Based on the current entries, I am leaning towards the latter, but I am really not sure. After the level 0 caches, there is a relatively small 128KB L1 cache that is used per shader array. The main motive was to localize the interconnection instead of using a global and complex crossbar where every L0 cache is connected to the L2 cache. Lastly, there is a global level 3 cache that was added on RDNA2 discrete GPUs. For RDNA3, many or just a few changes could be done. As mentioned before, the WGPs are said to have twice as many SIMD lanes, as such we could expect the L1 cache capacity also to increase. One could imagine crazier changes, like for example the removal of the L1 cache. Because with larger WGPs and unified L0 caches, AMD could have far fewer clients that need to be interconnected. If you think about chiplets in addition, it might be that each chip will never have a giant amount of WGPs. As such, they could revert the strategy and again directly connect the L0 caches to the level 2 cache. Or one could think about the opposite, increasing the level 0 and level 1 cache capacity and removing the intermediate global L2 cache going straight to the level 3 cache. There would be obviously some drawbacks with that as the level 2 cache has lower latencies and runs at clock frequency, which is not the case for the level 3 cache. However, a deep cache hierarchy has also some negatives, as in many cases you have to check every cache level before you access main memory, increasing the latencies there. Intel and Nvidia are not even using 3 cache levels, just 2. Based on AMD's current driver entries, it looks like RDNA3 will keep 4 cache levels. Many code lines are basically the same as on previous GPUs, mentioning L1 and L2 caches, but I don't think that they got renamed. Let's talk again a bit about the vector engines or microarchitecture. The compiler patches unveiled a couple of highly interesting information. For one, a compute unit mode is still supported as are wavefronts with 64 worker items. Moreover, RDNA3 shares two attributes with the upcoming CDNA3 processor, which is the architected flat scratch memory and packed work item IDs. The first one describes changes around the private segment buffer, which is scalar registers, which is not supported anymore. The second point is based on work item IDs of a work group are now packed inside just one vector register instead of taking a vector register pair ID. Lastly, AMD also classified the device type behind each GPU. The company will launch three discrete GPUs and one APU with RDNA3 graphics. According to rumors, the next APU chip is called Phoenix and until recently I expected it to use RDNA2 graphics. GCN5 slash Vega has been in APUs for a little less than 5 years and since APUs exist, the CPU or GPU IP was in most cases one generation behind. I didn't think that RDNA3 would be integrated into APUs so quickly. Potentially because the competition provides enough pressure, as Intel will continue to aggressively scale up the GPU performance and Ampere has shown with the M1 series how APUs are done right. Once again in regard to the vector processing units, where the code lines claim two compute units per WGP. That code block is also found on RDNA1 and RDNA2 GPUs. I am not sure if it will be changed later or keeps being true for GFX11. If it's correct and the rumor which claims 256 lanes for one WGP, one might imagine the configuration to look like as drawn by Kepler L2. Likely with larger caches but perhaps still separate structures. We will hopefully find out soon. Personally, I will probably not track RDNA3 driver patches so if you want to be more up to date you have to track it yourself or follow Kepler L2. Anyway, the compiler target for GFX11 provides a couple of new information. For example, the dot .2 instruction package is not supported by RDNA3 anymore. Another aspect that is not supported by RDNA3 are matrix arithmetic instructions as on CDNA1 and up. I was, or still am, very curious about that as Nvidia and Intel integrate systolic arrays. RDNA3 as a new microarchitecture would have been a good candidate for such a feature, but apparently AMD still doesn't deem it necessary. Though, what RDNA3 does support is a new .8 instruction package that is neither supported by the previous RDNA GPUs nor by the upcoming CDNA3. But it's not documented yet what is behind this instruction package. Maybe it's extremely cool or super lame. Some people might want to know what is exactly missing on RDNA3. 
It's two dot product instructions which multiply two 16-bit signed or unsigned integer values and use 32-bit accumulation. The dot 7 subtarget was already defined in March 2021 for RDNA3, as all other RDNA2 GPUs and CDNA3 have support for it. Up next is a new control entry for RDNA3, which is not found on RDNA1 or 2. It's for the primitive assembler scan converter binning pipeline, or simply put, the Drawstream binning rasterizer, which is there since GCN5. The control zero structure is for specifying the binning mode, the tile size, and the amount of states per bin. Control 1 is only handling two fields, the maximum allocation count and the maximum amount of primitives per batch. Again, it's not specified yet what Control 2 is responsible for. According to rumors, multiple RDNA3 products will be chiplet based, utilizing two graphic chips. Perhaps because of this system architecture change, new control fields were added. Or maybe, or in addition, new capabilities which improve the performance independently of that. Now, doesn't this look fascinating? Those three entries in yellow do not exist on RDNA1 or 2 GPUs. I only know about one abbreviation for FSR, and that's Fidelity of X Super Resolution from AMD. Moore's law is that, claimed in one of his videos, that RDNA3 may have hardware to accelerate FSR calculations. I don't know which video it was, but I found an older tweet about the same claim. So could this entry really be for that, or is it for something totally else? Well, primitive assembler, scan converter, makes it clear that it's related to the rasterization slash graphics pipeline. The entries below it have another abbreviation in addition, FBW. My best guess would be frame buffer right. Further, recursion X and Y are listed, so for a 2D area, like the display resolution or more generally some screen space content. The term recursion in context of GPUs is likely very interesting for some programmers to read. I'm just a layman, but I do wonder what AMD is exactly doing here and what application fields could benefit from those functions. Overall, I do have the impression that it's really for Fidelity FX super resolution. At the end, I want to show an overview about the current RDNA chips from AMD. On the left, we have the first RDNA 1 GPU, Navi 10, used by the 5700 XT with around 9 teraflops. Navi 14 and 12 are considered to be RDNA 1.1 by AMD or someone at AMD, as they include support for dot product instructions. Navi 10 Lite and 12 Lite do not support dot product instructions but ray tracing acceleration. Now the 12 Lite is a later revision and likely what is found in the final PlayStation 5 product. I just called it custom RDNA as it doesn't strictly follow RDNA 1 or 2. The same goes for the Xbox Series, although this chip uses newer AMD IP blocks and has all or most of the RDNA 2 features. Now the 21 was AMD's first RDNA 2 chip, where the 6900 XT achieved more than twice the teraflops in games compared to the RDNA 1 5700 XT GPU. I used the average clocks measured by computer base in over 14 games. Samsung's Exynos 2200, respectively Fan Hoch Lite, does appear to have the graphics core version 10.4. I listed under custom RDNA, as it's not clear what could be different from other RDNA GPUs, though you probably can see it as RDNA 2. Finally, we have the four upcoming RDNA 3 chips. I am unsure about the graphics core version, as it depends on when the chip project was started, but it's not that relevant anyway. What most people are curious about is probably the configuration and performance numbers. According to Graymont55, the teraflop target for Navi 23 is about 75 teraflops, over 3 times more than on Navi 21. However, the practical performance increase was said to be more conservative at 2.5x. With the newest claimed shader core count of about 12,000, that would need 3 GHz. There are whispers that RDNA3 has a really high clock target, so if we assume 3 GHz and more for each RDNA3 chip, we get 74 teraflops for Navi 31, about 50 for Navi 32, and 25 for Navi 33. The latter is said to be competitive in performance with the current RDNA2 flagship Navi 21. Lastly, Phoenix would have 9.2 teraflops, basically as much as the 5700 XT, and not that far away from the PlayStation 5. Though as always, paper numbers are one thing, real application performance another. Based on current rumors and assumptions, RDNA3 and ADA roughly stack up as displayed in the tables. It's not meant to be taken too seriously, as the rumors are a bit too volatile for my liking. Like the amount of WGPs per RDNA3 chip, the L3 cache capacity, or if ADA will keep 128 shader cores per SM, 
respectively 256 per TPC. From what I'm hearing, RDNA3 looks to be shaping up extremely strong, innovative and quite literally hype. However, personally, my excitement is turned off by the memory capacity. 8GB for Navi33 is a nope for me and unfortunately 4GB G6 memory chips are not in production yet to potentially realize a 16GB version. 12GB for Navi32 doesn't sound too hot either, given the high prices AMD will ask for. In that regard, Ada appears to offer a more attractive stack. But regardless of that, there are so many topics we are obviously looking forward to, like the precise nature of the RDNA3 chiplet architecture. However, I'm not going to ramble about that in this video, I'm signing off and goodbye. Hello again, a new day, a new patch series and some extra rambling. VCN4 makes an appearance that according to the entries does not support AV1 encoding. However, in September Paul got an AV1 entry, which has to be for VCN4. The driver patches for Rembrandt did not show AV1 decoding capabilities even after launch, so I would not worry here. Just for fun, a comparison between the iGPUs found in Rembrandt and Phoenix. For now I just copied the 3D pipeline, as I do not expect the geometry engine and ROB count to increase. As Phoenix will provide much more throughput, the cache hierarchy has to back that up, since the external memory speeds will only slightly increase. Perhaps the L2 cache capacity will heavily increase or AMD will use some other tricks. Navi33 could look like this. According to the patches, Arduino 3 will only have one micro-engine compute with four pipes, likely because mass is now in action and they wanted to save a bit of area, especially with multiple chiplets. Outside of this and the new WGPs, I did not change the previous Arduino 2 drawings, we will see how much of that needs to be corrected. How Navi31 and Navi32 could be built is too open for me, so I'm not including drawings for them. And now, really goodbye.